Baths have always been kinda annoying to me. Because let's imagine a situation where I want to make a file in a directory somewhere. So I do touch and then mnt because I use wsl, c programming and then well maybe registers and then the name of the file. True, maybe I didn't have to type all of that in, but even at the least, I would have to continue pressing tab, hoping that my shells understands what I wanted to do. In other words, to get this path, I need to either know exactly when I can press tab safely, or press tab and wait a bit too much time for my liking for all the options to show up. I didn't like that, so I started using fzf to traverse through directories and get to files. I've actually made two videos on that, if you want to watch them, but my previous solution, or at the very least how I used it, wasn't that perfect. How it would work is that it immediately loads up all the possible spaces, or I mean places, that it needs to search in. If I specify literally everything, first of all it's going to be slow, and then also error route because some things are not writable and so on and I didn't account for that. So instead it ended up being limited. I spent the last, I think 12 hours making a better solution. It wasn't that difficult, just kind of took time, you know? So let me show it off to you. First of all, we have the main function called pick. This is the magic that does everything. And to this function, you have to specify a single argument, which is the folder where you want to start your search. Dot, as always, means the current folder. So let's start searching in dot files. Press enter. And now you can see both files and folders. This is pretty much just ls and you get its output. If you decide to reconsider, you can just press escape and it prints you a dot, which is very useful. <laughs> but in a usual situation, which I'm going to show off to you a bit later, this dot won't actually matter. Let's go back though to the same dot. I have this folder called fish. Let's select it and press enter. And now I can search in fish. Let's go to fun. Now let's pick a file, fish prompt. And because it was a file, it's automatically selected. So cool, you can now select files. But how do you select folders? in a pretty strange, but I think good way. So right now I'm at fun. If I press escape right now, that means that I selected everything that I ever wanted. So I press escape and here it is. Instead of FZF going through every single file and directory and giving you all of those options, which are going to be difficult to filter through sometimes. No, you just pick your own tree and go on fuzzy searching instead of using the default method of actually needing to type in everything, which is once again slow, or at least I think it is. So the way this function works is that there is a while loop that continues on as long as your current thing is a directory. The current thing is the path that you've now collected. And as you can see, yeah, indeed, it just lss the whatever current path you have collected and then passes it to fzf for you to choose. And if you press escape, you break out of the while loop, continuing on with the path that that you have collected up until this point. Now let me show off the next function, get parent directory. If we run pwd, you can see my entire path, which is in tc programming.files. So let's run get parent directory. We get an fzf window with a couple of choices. The first one being slash, so the root, then mnt, then c, then programming, then dot files and then a dot. I actually forgot that it also displays the name of the current directory as well as the dot. Well, basically, you're supposed to pick the dot if you want the current one. Uh, this should technically be removed or you just don't pick it. As easy as that. The idea of this is you can pick programming, for example, and it prints the path to that. So you were able to pick a parent directory, including the slash, by the way, if we uh, select it, well, it gets printed as you would expect. So now we have pick and get parent directory and yes, we can use them together and that's like the entire power of this thing. Press a certain hotkey, Control F for me, and now I can pick a parent directory, let's start in programming, and now this is the folder that I start pick in. Remember how we passed dot to start in the current directory? 
Well, we have just now specified MNTC programming to pick and started picking in there. Okay, let's go to info. Actually, that's private. <laughs> let's go to a different one. Let's go to Rust and then uh, learning and world. Okay, I'm done. And here it is. I just pasted what I searched for in my command buffer. And yes, you can paste as well. And it's actually very, very easy. And now I combined get parent directory and pick, but you don't have to actually. You can just use pick. For me, it's control S. So now we start picking in the current directory. I don't want anything. So let's <laughs> print a dot, I guess. And don't worry, by the way, by the time you see this video, the functions will be fixed with these two issues. But now we've been able to insert starting from some parent directory and starting from the current one, as well as just print it to std out. But what do we do the most in our shell? I think we CD the most. Maybe we... No, we definitely LS the most. And then we CD. Well, I made a few functions which are basically like aliases to make that CDing better. And this is the core of the reason why I decided to do this to begin with. So now when I type KS, this is the same as using pick dot. But now... When I select something, for example, fish, and then fun, and that's it, I now cd into that. Better yet, the command is actually stored in history. If I wanted to do it again, maybe I cd dash to go back to dot files, I can actually just press up twice and execute it again, because, well, it's stored in history. Often functions just do something and then fuck off without actually telling you the code that they executed. But I think something like cd being in your history is very nice because now I don't have to redo it. I don't have to re-go to that directory, I can just grab it from my history. And then also I can use kf to add get parent directory to this entire operation. So let's dot files and actually that's it. And I move to dot files, very simple. And as you can see, when you use parent directory, the path that you get is now absolute. Wait, that's not how they say it. So there's relative path and there is Surely it's not absolute. That sounds strange. Or maybe I just haven't slept in a while. It's 11 a.m. I woke up at 3 p.m. yesterday. Yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> you just decide to do some fish programming, make some fish functions, and then here you are, regardless. Another thing that I at least thought we do really often is open files, or at least we want to see what's inside of them very often. And then we might want to scroll and so on. So your immediate thought is probably less, and so was mine actually, but I realized that less often won't have any syntax highlighting, and you know what, well, new of them. So when I use JS, funnily enough, like no, that doesn't mean JavaScript for me. Let's just see it in action. I open it and now I can pick a file. I already showed you how to go into directories and yes, indeed, you can do that with this as well. But let's immediately just select a file. And because it's a file, it's selected and here we go. We opened my init.lua in new of them. Let's close this. And as you can see, it's also stored in history. So you can redo it again if you want to. And sometimes, especially if I'm working on my init.lua config, I reopen the same file in new of them again and again. And well, I don't have to redo it because it's in my history. I can just up and then execute the command. And as you have probably already guessed, js does the same thing but now you can pick a parent so we can do dot files oh <laughs> that's interesting because since I picked dot files instead of the dot now we're on an absolute path because of which if now I use colors or pick colors I mean and open it and close it immediately because it doesn't matter now the path that we have is not a relative one, but an absolute one. If we picked the dot, it would be relative. Okay, so that bug wasn't a bug, it was a feature. It was absolutely a feature and 100% intended. Mm-hmm. So that's about it for the show off. So let's actually get to the code. First of all, let's look at the get parent directory function. First, we get the output of PWD, 
which just gives us the full path, then we split it by forward slash, but only take from the second element because the first one is now an empty string. We create another list that has the slash at the top and the dot at the bottom. We print this list but on separate lines and then use fcf to pick from it. And by the way, this function you can also grab for me, it's very simple, you just can provide a list to it and it will print it on multiple lines, which is really useful with FZF. And before you feel a raging urge to pause your screen and rewrite the functions yourself, don't bother, you don't really have to, because I'll leave two links in the description. One for the current commit, or rather the commit of the time that I'm recording on, and also just a normal link, which will have the most recent commit at the time of your watching. The difference between the two is that the former will definitely be what you see here in the video, but might be worse, maybe in the future I make some improvements. Also, the latter could be worse because I maybe delete all of these functions because I feel like it. So that's why I will leave two links. So let's continue. Now we set a variable output to what we picked. If we picked slash or a dot, well, that's pretty much it. We just print them. But if we did not pick them and picked something else, then we accumulate the entire path starting from the first element, the first real element, by the way, not the slash, the first element after the slash, and collect the path until we get to the folder that we ended up picking. And that's how this works. Now let's see at how the ks and so on and js and so on functions work. Very simply, actually, we get a variable picked that calls pick and if we didn't pick anything, it returns the error code of 1. But if you did pick something, then you cd into that directory. And how do you do that? Or rather, how do you make it appear in history? Well, if you use command line and then anything after that, that will replace your command line buffer. And then you can use dash f execute to execute what's in that buffer. So this is how it works. KD is pretty much the same. The only difference being is that instead of the dot, we specify the variable in it. And how do we get it? With these four, yes, four lines, uh, which we get by calling get important dir which we just talked about. So we get the output of that command into init. If we picked nothing, the same way, we return 1, so we fail the command. If everything is fine, it continues on like you would expect. Oh, actually, I confused this function with another one. I meant to show off kf, but it works so similarly that it might as well be the same. The get important dir is not a function that exists, get parent dir does. js, jd, oh, jd doesn't exist as far as you know, uh, and jf. They work in a very similar way, the only difference here being Instead of CD, use new of them or whatever you actually want to use. And the same thing goes for here. You use get parent directory, and here we go. Now we have the two functions that I actually use in hotkeys so I can insert paths when I want to do something else than CD or new of them files or directories. And it works in a, once again, very similar way. If we don't pick anything, then we just return. But if everything is correct, then we insert what we picked into the command line and we do that by using the fi. Wait, where did the f come from? We use the i option and we do a very similar thing for paste relative path. And then these are the hotkeys that I have for them. Control D, Control F and Control S. And you can pick different ones by running fish key reader and then pressing a key. I press Ctrl Q and it literally just gives you the command to use to make your own hotkey. So if this was useful to you, press a like, type some comment, maybe you have a question or a suggestion, definitely subscribe so you don't miss my content, but most importantly, stay fresh, cheese bags, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!